Decades have passed since their last adventure in Colorado Springs, and the cast members of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman have stayed busy with new shows, career changes, and a controversial trip to Australia. Jane Seymour played Michaela Quinn, the ambitious title character of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Throughout the show's six seasons, Dr. Quinn dealt with gender bias, patients in crisis, and the harsh living conditions of the Wild West. In real life, Seymour has faced her own harrowing struggles. Before the show premiered, she was bankrupt and in desperate need of work. As she revealed on NPR's All Things Considered in 2015, I called my agent and I said, I will do anything, please tell the networks. Soon thereafter, Seymour received the script for Dr. Quinn. Despite that lucky break, she didn't immediately think that viewers would be interested in a Western series with a female protagonist. But the show's massive success ultimately speaks for itself. Looking back, Seymour admitted, One of the proudest things I've done is Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. It was such a remarkable series. You watch Dr. Quinn now, and it's just so on point to what's happening today. It, it dealt with everything. In the years since, Seymour has remained plenty busy, appearing on such shows as Smallville, Jane the Virgin, and The Kaminsky Method. And in 2022, she became a small screen leading lady once again, when she was cast as the title character in the quirky detective series Harry Wilde. Joe Lando was an unforgettable heartthrob to legions of Dr. Quinn viewers. He played Sully, the tomahawk-throwing hunk who falls in love with Dr. Quinn. His rugged appearance and luscious hair made him a perfect fit for the role. As Dr. Quinn creator Beth Sullivan told the Los Angeles Times in 1993, Lando's real, he's not the typical star jerk with any kind of pomp and ego trip. After the show ended, Lando cut his legendary locks, a transformation that allowed him to play a broader range of characters. As he admitted to Chicago Parent in 2010, I always had to find a way to fit the hair into the story. You can't play a banker and have long hair and have it work. Lando has enjoyed an eclectic career that includes several made-for-TV movies, soap operas, and horror flicks. He also maintains a close relationship with his former castmates. In 2021, he reunited with Jane Seymour and William Shockley to celebrate his 60th birthday, and he and Seymour rekindled their on-screen chemistry in 2022 when they co-starred in the TV movie A Christmas Spark. Chad Allen played Matthew Cooper, the eldest of the three children that Dr. Quinn adopts after their mother is killed by a snake. He received several award nominations for his work on the show, but perhaps even more newsworthy was an off-screen incident that happened in 1996. That was when he was publicly outed by a tabloid, but he didn't let that slow him down, as he continued to work as an openly gay actor for almost 15 years. But Allen has since given up showbiz for a career as a clinical psychologist. Despite the shift, he's still grateful for his time on screen. He said goodbye to acting in a 2015 video on his YouTube channel. I am incredibly grateful today. Um, I have been and I will always be. Jessica Bowman wasn't the first actor to star as Colleen Cooper on Dr. Quinn. The role was originally played in seasons one and two by Erica Flores, who ended up leaving the show in the middle of season three. Rumors swirled about the reasons for Flores' departure, though none were ever substantiated. No matter what the real reason was, Bowman managed to inject new life into Dr. Quinn's adopted daughter. Since her time on the show, Bowman has appeared in a few TV movies with titles like Young Hearts Unlimited and Lethal Vows. She was also in the big screen thriller Joyride, and she had an uncredited appearance in the Adam Sandler Drew Barrymore rom com Fifty First Dates. It seems that she's chosen to live a more quiet, private life since then, as she hasn't had any on screen acting credits since 2011. Georgianne Johnson played Elizabeth Quinn, Dr. Quinn's proper East Coast mother. The veteran performer brought her impressive acting chops to eight episodes of the Western drama between 1993 and 1997. After a decades-long showbiz career, she died at the age of 91 in 2018. In addition to her time on Dr. Quinn, Johnson could boast of a long list of credits that span Broadway, TV, and film. She appeared on other popular TV shows like Seinfeld and Cold Case, and her stage work included the original production of The Pajama Game. She was married to Jack Tenner, a Superior Court judge in Los Angeles. As her family wrote in her obituary, she said some of her happiest times as an actor were the improvisation she and Jack did to raise funds at the many events they attended. She will be greatly missed. Playing the role of town saloon keeper and brothel owner Hank Lawson was William Shockley. Hank was known for his gruff, chauvinistic behavior, though he did have a few redeeming moments. Fans of the show tended to have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this character. For Shockley's part, he didn't mind playing a quasi-villain. As he told Media Mikes in 2014, 
I loved the privilege of developing a character over a six-year run. He was one guy on the surface and a totally different person in his heart. Shockley first became interested in acting when he was a teenager. His big break happened in 1987 when he landed a role in the sci-fi movie Robocop. Your move, creep. Several years later, Dr. Quinn launched his career to new heights. After the series ended, it was clear that he'd found his niche. He co-wrote and acted in several Western films, including The Gun Down, The Legend of Five Mile Cave, and Far Haven. In addition to all that, he also works as a production company executive and a musician. Orson Bean was beloved as Colorado Springs general store owner Lauren Bray. The character was crotchety and often troublesome, which was a far cry from Bean's real personality. He brought his natural charm as a longtime panelist on the game show Tell the Truth, as well as movies like Being John Malkovich and TV shows like Modern Family. Bean was also a dedicated humanitarian who founded a school and the arts-based organizations The Sons of the Desert and the Pacific Resident Theater Ensemble. Sadly, Bean's life was cut short in February February 2020 when he was hit by a car. He was crossing a street in Venice, California when he was clipped by one vehicle and then struck by another. It was ultimately determined that Bean's death was an accident. He was 91 years old. Dr. Quinn and Byron Sully's relationship wasn't the only romantic plotline on the show. There was also the unlikely love story between Myra, one of the sex workers at the local brothel, and Horace Bing, the town's telegraph operator. Frank Collison was the actor behind Horace. After the show ended, Collison remained committed to acting in film, TV, and on the stage. He appeared on the big screen in such notable movies as The Village and Oh Brother Where Art Thou. He also graced TV screens on shows like Monk and Star Trek The Next Generation. As for the live theater portion of his career, he helped found the Pacific Resident Theater in Venice, California, and he even appeared in Zoom-based plays during the COVID-19 pandemic. Every good Western drama needs a reverend, and the one on Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman was Timothy Johnson, who was portrayed by Jeffrey Lower. He played Reverend Johnson for all six seasons, developing from a spurned lover to a blind man dedicated to serving his parish no matter what. How can I be your reverend when I can't even see the people in my church? Since Lower said goodbye to his time playing Reverend Johnson, he's remained quite busy. He's continued to work on both the stage and the screen, which has included appearances on popular TV shows like NCIS and JAG, as well as plays like And the Band Played On and Johnny Skidmarks. Outside of showbiz, Lower has also gotten his real estate and general construction licenses and started flipping houses with his wife in Los Angeles. Some viewers might argue that Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman was ahead of its time in its willingness to embrace some pretty heavy issues. This was certainly true in the case of Robert E., a formerly enslaved man who was separated from his wife and children. Henry G. Sanders brought depth and emotion to Robert E. throughout the show's run, perhaps drawing on his own tumultuous life as inspiration. He spent time in the Army and served two tours in Vietnam before heading out to Los Angeles to make it in showbiz. However, Sanders didn't originally set out to become an actor. In in fact, he went to LA in search of a publisher for his novel. While that book never got published, the writer-turned-actor never put down his pen. Since Dr. Quinn ended, he's written several plays that have gone on to be produced. Barbara Babcock played Dorothy Jennings beginning in season two of Dr. Quinn, and the character remained a part of the show until the sixth and final season. Babcock brought plenty of spunk and grit to the role, as Dorothy was someone who didn't exactly have an easy life. As the editor of the Colorado Springs Gazette, she was always nearby when crazy things happened. She also survived a single mastectomy operation, which was, of course, performed by Dr. Quinn. I lose a part of myself. I'm not able to accept that. Since Dr. Quinn ended its run, Babcock has remained busy. She spent some time traveling all over the world, from Kenya and South Africa all the way to Peru. She finally put down semi-permanent roots in 2002 when she moved back to Carmel-by-the-Sea, California to refurbish her old family home, as she noted to Carmel Magazine in 2018. I wanted to leave Los Angeles during the 46 years I spent there. At that time, it was necessary as an actor to be either in New York or LA. I kept thinking of leaving but didn't want to give up the business yet. Two years after settling in her newly renovated home, Babcock was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. But her story was far from over. As she revealed, that was a big jolt, obviously. I asked the doctor, how long do I have? His answer was 8 to 10 years. That was 14 years ago. 
Jonelle Allen played the supporting character of Grace, an African-American woman who owned and operated her own cafe. Allen was overjoyed at the opportunity to accurately portray the strength, resilience, and beauty of black people in the American West, as she explained to ABC7 Los Angeles in 2020. I used to believe, because of seeing old movies and stuff, that black people weren't in the Old West. Well, we were. We were there. We were very much involved in the foundation of the Old West. Allen's fight for social justice didn't end with her time on Dr. Quinn. She's gone on to teach at the Young American College for the Performing Arts, and she still performs around the country, and she has no plans of slowing down. The thing is, we persisted, yeah. and that's what I always say, persist. 21st century people might be horrified to learn that barbers used to double as doctors, but that's indeed how it was back then. And that's exactly what Jake Slicker, played by Jim Nobelock, did in the town of Colorado Springs, at least until Dr. Quinn showed up. Nobelock brought the barber surgeon to life for all six seasons of the Western drama. Afterwards, he kept acting for a while, which included a few TV shows and a bit part in the 2005 remake of King Kong. But then he headed to a land down under. Alas, his wife, Dr. Quinn creator Beth Sullivan denied that they ever agreed to live in Australia, and the two ended up separating. As Nobelock claimed in their divorce proceedings, I enjoyed living in Australia over California, and it was my belief that my wife and I would live in Victoria, Australia permanently and raise our children there. 